बंगाल गुजरात हिमाचल प्रदेश छत्तीसगढ़ उत्तर प्रदेश हरियाणा चंडीगढ़ एंड जम्मू एंड कश्मीर एग्जैक्टली and uh, we've also had an ngo which is tarumitra join us because they're, they're a group of jesuit priests and sisters who are uh, uh, promoting afforestation all across india uh, today we have a special group uh, who are associated with the sanskriti school uh, in delhi and uh, it's all thanks to neeta ganguli who is an educator an author a climate reality leader and mentor an attitude change Changer, uh, who has managed to get uh, all our panelists today together, uh, they join us from Pune. That's Romit Sen. We have Shubhra Prakash Mukherjee, who is an advocate, joining us from Delhi. Another former teacher of Sanskriti School, Anita Ganeriwala, and we also have uh, Chandika Gupta, who is joining us from Goa. So I would immediately ask Neeta uh, to take the session forward. and tell us how she taught environmental education uh, when she was a teacher um, in sanskriti school so over to you neeta thank you so much neela thank you for having me here thank you karuna for having me here i'll share the screen first and then i'll take you uh, yes i think Uh, can you all see it perfectly okay yes. <laughs> so i i think i'll reduce this a little bit so that you can all see it yes yeah perfect so um so i call this eco designing a look back actually um if you see this mural right in front of you this was the uh, uh, the first one which was created in 2007 this was for a 350 dot org festival which was an inter, inter school festival we started organizing uh, you know um, after 7 years and you can see the children over there in the end they are uh, they are they making the mural so this is i'm using this slide after 13 years so when i was looking back you know i actually found this i said i must start with this this is something very close to my heart and um, when i joined uh, sanskriti school in around uh, march 2000 and that time the building was partially uh, constructed you know the senior wing was still not made and uh, we were having a little uh, you know uh, get together with the teachers and uh, mrs gauri ishwaran she was the principal at that time and she said you know we are going to celebrate the 30th um, anniversary of earth day so why didn't you give us suggestion what to do and uh, so everyone gave and i also gave my own suggestion and uh, i get a little excited when i have to talk about environment and i think maybe she saw that excitement and she said okay neeta you're going to become the head of the department for the environment she so she gave me a lab like we have the physics chemistry biology lab she said this is your lab i said okay what is this lab i'm going to do she said you're going to create an environment lab so this was a totally a new concept we had and uh, i said okay fine she says she says uh, fun is no problem and uh, we you just say what you want and we are going to put it in your lab but since it was a environment lab i didn't want to you know there's no point buying something from the market and putting it i thought well this has to do something with the environment so it needs to be environment friendly so i was a little cautious about what i'm going to put into the lab well um, in today's scenario if you see uh, you can have a lab anywhere you, you don't need a huge lab you can have an indoor lab you can have an outdoor lab i mean right now i'm in mumbai after my husband's retirement i have my kitchen that is a lab so you can even have a kitchen that is a lab you know and uh, so it's the it's not this you just need a space somewhere where you can actually uh, uh, use your creativity and try to do activities which can actually make a difference to the environment and that's what i thought about my lab should be it should be something which should make a difference well i may i feel very strongly about this that in the living world if you see the 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 rules of the living world is very clear you know somebody's waste becomes somebody's food a poison for somebody becomes potion for somebody and in the living world they do not have anything known as a landfill 
like a wasteful landfill which we have it in our world so if you talk about the human world in the human world we are always taking we are making we are using with disposing we have a very wasteful attitude towards the environment and this is something which needs to change and that's why i wanted to bring it in the lab and uh, when i was a child my father used to say something you know habit is something which once it is formed it never goes if you see the spelling of habit it's h a b i t h if you remove a bit remains a you remove bit remains b you remove it remains if you remove i still a cup of tea remains and by the time you remove that tea you don't remain so that's why i wanted to have a lab which did not have anything where i could form a habit but habit of what eco responsible behavior i wanted the children to have that habit i wanted them to be aware about their surroundings i wanted them to be sensitive about small little things even when a new leaf comes out you know they should be sensitive that this is a new leaf they should have the knowledge the understanding the attitude the empathy and should be motivated for the cause of saving the environment because this is where we live we don't have another planet where we can just leave this and say okay we are moving we can't this is our home this is the home that we all share so i want to develop that attitude so that's the lab i wanted to do so i always believe that nature is the best teacher and uh, mrs ishwan needs to send me a whole lot of books you know she says neeta you can use this book or this book i said no i don't want to have any books because children are already pressurized with so many subjects whenever they see a book they always associate it with examination they have to give an exam but i wanted to create an environmental lab which was integrated into the regular curriculum so we made sure that every class had a timetable which has had a ebs period so it was there in the ebs period this couldn't have happened without mrs ishwaran because she was actually the pillar behind the whole thing she was the one who supported me anything i wanted i didn't have to ask i just told her and she allowed me to do it so i had so much of uh, you know courage and so much of confidence to make changes because i had a principal like mrs ishwaran so yes we integrated totally into the curriculum and i did it in such a way that no matter what the subject is there is something it is all subjects are correlated with the environment so i made sure the syllabus was made in such a way that it was correlated to the subject matter which is taught in the class and which was done beautifully by anita in the primary section and then i created my own syllabus too now the syllabus i created was out of the environment days i mean this is there with us you google and you find every month there is some environment day we we are celebrating the whole year's calendar is in front of you so i created my syllabus looking at the environment days and i made my program accordingly i also looked at the festivals india has a lot of festivals and we have so many things that we do in the festivals like this was a like ninth standard used to go for the anti cracker march now when we talk about the anti cracker march it was not only the march it's not say no to cracker which was important but who are making those crackers and i used to make a point to make the children understand the children that you're going to go out for this march but remember they are children and the children who are making those crackers and i should play a game with them and i should say okay tell me i have a job offer for you and uh, to know exactly whether you're suitable for this job or not show me your fingers and the children used to show me their fingers and i said no you're not you can't be taken you can't be you're not eligible you're not eligible so the children used to get frustrated and they say what are you talking about what, you, what is this job i said this is a job of i need those children who have those fine small tiny thin fingers because you have to fill in the gunpowder in the lorries you know which we blow it up in seconds they have to fill up the masala in this so if you have thick fingers like me then you are not eligible for this job and they used to get shocked i mean this is what are you talking about yes and that's what i used to go from there so from after talking to them about child labor then we used to go out and take them we used to do this marches outside so this march is a fantastic thing the children love to go out but what is the thought process behind it that is what was brought in in and was taught to the children
So the festivals we did it, we did Holi. We made our own Holi colors, you know. And the the whole school was aware that we need to use natural herbal colors to play Holi. Otherwise, Holi is a fun game. It's a fun festival. But with the fun, we need to also take care of the environment. Those little little thought processes were taken care of. We worked with various NGOs like Romit is over here. He was with Development Alternative at that time, and we did various projects with them. The whole composting that we started. It's started with with actually development to alternative he got me introduced to somebody known as gopal sane and we started this bio enzymes and we started doing the composting so everything that i brought in into my school were thanks to the different ngos who helped me to you know to educate me to tell me about what this process is and i if i felt that yes this is something which i feel is really good for the environment then only i used to accept it and then i used to you know uh, uh, bring it out to the children and they knew about it so little by little by little i taught the children it was like a, like i say it's like a homeopathic dose you know you give them little by little so it's like homeopathic dose you know it shows its effect but it definitely takes out the 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 disease from its roots and that's the that's how i concentrated on it and then we built different clubs children had different interests so depending on different interests i had various clubs so my role as a teacher was only a facilitator whatever the child required to to uh, you know uh, to uh, to spread the message about their club i only facilitated them i never dictated them i did not tell them the do's and the don'ts of course there were do's and don'ts but i i i i provided them so they are comfortable in their uh, in their uh, in their own space and that's what we did we did. definitely had the eco club which was run by the De department of environment uh, delhi government we had a sanskriti 350 we have two children who are sitting over here they'll talk about it green leaves and independent clubs so children were encouraged at every level and evs lab was a space for them where they could express themselves in whatever way they want to for the nature so it was yes it was definitely by the students it was for the students it was of the students so when i designed the laboratory when i had to design the laboratory i went back and saw the definition of laboratory which says it's a room building equipped with for scientific experimental research development or teaching and i did exactly that but with the difference i made sure that what i equipped with the lab was something which was reused recycled because my waste should become my resource too so the my crux of my lab was the three bins i had a red blue green bin and every classroom had it every corridor had it the whole school had it the blue is for the paper i started with simple wire mesh and i had the idli grinder to make my papaya mesh but then i moved to the univac machines later on and that is what i did and it was a beautiful process so i we actually used to make bulk chart papers which was from a used paper itself and children used that chart paper to express them, themselves there is no point writing save the tree on a virgin you know chart paper because the chart paper is coming from the tree only after cutting a tree that's so why it has no meaning to have such posters so i made sure when the children had the posters they made the posters it was meaningful but with what were they painting that was also taken care of we made sure there was no mongoose hair because there's no point painting and say save the animal save the planet if you already already you're killing mongoose to make you paint with those beautiful wonderful colors so we introduced the concept of the the artificial brush even papier papers anything which was wasteful which was used in the lab we had uh, annual functions we had annual uh, you know uh, where we used to have props and we required uh, you know even like jewelries and all for the different annual functions they were all created from the wasteful materials which we came into the lab even sawdust from the chalk box was used to make rangoli colors you know so we made we learned, i taught the children how to make herbal colors we made our own herbal color papier mache was done in a huge way and anita was an expert when it came to making papier mache i mean she she used to really make wonderful papier mache she'll speak to you about that 
even the canteen. Canteen is a hub where the children love to visit. But what is the what is what are we using in the canteen? So we made sure everything changed into stainless steel, and the usables and the uh, reusables what we used were we replaced all the thermocols. We brought in, we changed the drinks. We removed the Coca Cola and the Pepsi bottles, and we got the local glass bottle drinks. We used patels, and we went. have totally into composting which was thanks to da who introduced us about composting so the pit was built just behind the canteen so that there's no excuse that hum kachra kaha fekenge every wet waste from each classroom from every staff room from the canteen was collected and was composted there was no mixing of waste which was taking place in our school not only that if you see sanskriti school it was it's built in the ridge area there used to be a ridge over there so we we actually broke a part of our school and it was devoted to rebuild the ridge the whole concept of dry garden was brought in with a huge patch was actually there were there were steps you seeing the boulders over there in dry garden there were actually steps over there it was actually recreated we got the soil from there the plants all indigenous variety and today if you go to that spot now if you go now you'll find huge trees over there we also brought in the concept of drip irrigation by by matkas you know and so the trees because it was a new school we were planting but we did not use hose pipe to water our garden we used the matka drip irrigation so little little things these were the equipments the apparatus the the lab used so that and the school grew with it the water bodies were taken care we did the water testing regularly we even got a loom for ourselves to weave our plastic bags the poly bags so we were conscious in that level that every waste which is generated inside the school premises is going to be reused first before it is sent for recycling and for renewable energy we got we brought we bought this uh, parabolic uh, uh, you know solar dish and it was fantastic children used to actually have used to cook over there and winters delhi winters are quite severe so obviously most of the work if you see requires where we need to work with water so since it was severe winters that was a time two months from december to january say beginning of february we used to have film festivals and that was the time junior senior all used to be exposed to meaningful environment films I remember we were showing uh, uh, the Mike Pandey's uh, film that is Shows of Silence, where he uh, when he made a film about the 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 whale sh sharks, you know, they which we which which were uh, in in the coast of Gujarat, and tsunami had just happened, you know. So this was, and then I, I we used to keep a chart paper over there and ask the children to write uh, uh, their comments. And it was a junior school student from class four who wrote a very stunning comment, and sh and he wrote and he wrote in. bold letters that the tsunami was actually a slap to mankind i mean that really struck me i said the children can actually are aware a very much of a no matter whether they're senior or junior they're all very aware as to what is happening and what we need to do outreach was also there yes we outreach outside other people so you see we uh, the 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 waste management in the school was something which were i was we were all very proud of and it started in 2002 with ravi so when we brought in ravi ravi we actually associated with people who are not white collared you know they don't have a very uh, fantastic background so ravi uh, through swachha uh, vibhavendu jha he actually helped me in getting me in touch with ravi and he was actually a reformed drug abuser but he had reformed and uh, vibhavendu told me no he needs some work he needs some uh, some sort of a uh, you know a uh, uh, place where he can work So we don't want him to go back and of course with mrs ishwaran's uh, uh, say we ag agreed and he did a fantastic job when it came to lifting the paper and uh, captain sahab you see over there in 2004 he was in the security guard and this, due to some reason the security guard you know the, the 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 contract was given to somebody else but this guy was a very sincere security guard and mrs ishwaran saw this that guy has got the caliber but we had to employ him so we actually created this course where he was made in charge of all the biodegradable waste in the school and i mean nobody could pass him he was so so particular about segregation of waste abdul is a wonderful story came to us in 2006 and chintan helped me 
for that and this boy used to roam the street of uh, charakepuri holding that white bag you've seen rap pickers holding that white bag and he used to roam the street for 10 hours to fill up that bag because these children cannot sell anything unless that bag weighs 60 60 kg so how did we make a difference we this is not a charity this was a totally a mutualism where we had a pact with him he came to us when he was only 14 and he had even cigarette mark burn marks on his hand you know when he came to me and his task was that in the morning he will go to school and by 4 o'clock he will come to my school so 2:30 the school gets over by 4 all the segregation of waste have taken place all the rooms or the classrooms have been cleaned up all the garbage has been you know uh, bagged in the in the in the dustbins all he had to do is sort a little bit it used to take him about an hour or two sort it bag it and sell it and so we had one teacher and uh, the uh, 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 who was there who used to take care and make and make sure that he went to school so when i used to ask abdul you know and abdul became friendly to with all the students and i used to ask abdul abdul to bada ho ke kya banega he said main bada ho ke padha likha kabadi wala banunga and when we were posted in lucknow and that's the time he i got a call from him and he he told me that he is a driver so we did make a difference because somehow it brought in a lot of confidence and he could look ahead because of his education and uh, so that's that's what we feel proud about because because with all these initiative we had taken we actually had an environment policy we even got our iso certification and that made us all very proud sanskritians and yes we were it was action packed it was action packed you can see there are there were so many pictures i couldn't put it you can see shubhra right over there and you know and the children we used to have mock you can see even the chontika over there with the conference declaration i'll share a short film which was made on sanskriti school by uh, uh, by my friend ishani so here just enjoy this film oh sorry just a minute i have to what happened it's not playing yes um i don't think the video has audio for the participants you didn't you didn't hear anything no i don't think the participants heard anything can you hear it 
Not very well. No. It's getting cut out. Audio is here. I think, um, were you able to hear the? Were Only you able a little to hear? at the end. So, uh, perhaps if you, yes, perhaps if you have a YouTube link to it, you might be able to share that in the chat and we can share it with others. I'll do that. I'll do that. Yeah. I'll do that. I'll do that. I actually have it in my laptop, so I'll do that. Uh, so before I end, I'll, um, I want to uh, share a story. So it's like a grandfather, uh, you know, is walking down the beach with his grandson. And um, all of a sudden they see there are these thousands of starfish on the, uh, on, the, on the shore. And so the child gets really excited. So he runs and he picks up a starfish and he throws it back into the sea and he keeps doing that. So the grandfather gets a little you know, annoyed and he says, what are you doing? You know, I mean, there's thousands of this, you know. He says, no, I want to, you know, uh, save them. He says, what difference does it make? You know, there are thousands of them and uh, it's not going to make any difference. Just let's carry on with the walk. So the child uh, looks at his grandfather and he looks back again. He runs again. He picks up another starfish. He throws it back and he turns around and he, and he says that it just made difference to this one. So I think um, that's what uh, I feel that our children, you know, at, at Sanskriti, uh, if there is one person who's made a difference, I can't, I wouldn't say one, are there many who have made a difference? Because uh, we have to realize that this is, this is the one home that we all share and we have to take care of it. And uh, somehow I feel that, uh, you know, uh, taking care of the environment has become a way of life for us Sanskritians, definitely. Thank you so much. Wonderful. And it uh, basically connects to what we say as well, that uh, some of our slogans for Earth Day is every act counts. So certainly your uh, school uh, has taken that forward. Last year, our theme was take climate action. So we saw all your students taking climate action. And uh, coming up till 2021, the theme is restore our Earth. So let's all um, pitch in to uh, towards sustainable practices, to reducing our um, carbon footprint, to leading low carbon lifestyles so that we can restore our earth. Uh, thank you for commemorating Earth Day in uh, the year 2000, the 30th anniversary of Earth Day. This year we commemorated the 50th anniversary yes. and it was all digital because we were in lockdown. And uh, that was a way we reached out to even more people. And uh, if you go on to the Earth Day Network YouTube channel, you'll be able to see how Earth Day was commemorated uh, over Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So it was at least 12 hours of uh, programming, including art, what we call artists for the earth, because artists have a voice uh, that, uh, you know, and a platform that reaches to more people with environmental messages. Um, I'm so glad that you showed the children uh, doing all those, uh, I guess they were Nuka Nataks and uh, plays Everything. and uh, <laughs> songs and yeah. absolutely. So yeah, so they're, all, they're all young artists for the earth. Yeah. And uh, I guess uh, they, that uh, actually makes a difference. And you, you remember more if you put things into practice and uh, yes. do things hands on. And uh, I don't know if you all are aware of it, but uh, this Saturday is actually World Cleanup Day. And Earth Day Network is part of World Cleanup Day um, across the globe. And um, well, if you aren't able to actually go out and clean, whether it's in your community or your campus, maybe do green messages uh, and help us. We have a campaign called the Great Global Cleanup Heroes, and uh, they're going to be part of this uh, 
this uh, World Cleanup Day along with uh, Let's Do It India. Um, so the idea is that there are, of course, webinars on Saturday. So do log on to our Earth Day Network India Facebook page to learn about that. And in the evening, if you pledge your green act, if you pledge your act of green, you can be part of uh, their global concert, which has uh, various artists for the earth performing on Saturday. Uh, so do join us on Saturday. And again, as I mentioned, this Thursday, we're also going to have uh, students who took part, uh, the schools uh, and their students who took part in our morning assembly contest, which we've been running every year. Sadly, we weren't able to do it this year, uh, which is why I've decided this coming Thursday to bring together uh, the schools which have won our morning assembly contest. And of course, uh, each year the themes are different. In 2018, it was end plastic pollution. In 2019, it was protect our species. Uh, so we'll have um, uh, principals or maybe educators of uh, various schools uh, joining us next Thursday. Uh, and we also have something called Green Environment Monitors, uh, which is what some of your uh, practices, such as your composting and things like that, reminded me of, where maybe some of the school's uh, teachers who are watching us, uh, they can um, uh, start this as well. Uh, in you know not just having a class monitor, but having what we call gens, green environment monitors, who will take uh, forward all those that all those solutions and sustainable practices you suggested, such as uh, ending plastic pollution in the canteens, having a compost pit, maybe doing rainwater harvesting, or even uh, going solar. So I hope uh, who you know all the teachers were. Uh, who have logged on to our various webinars. Uh, if they want to write to us, we can definitely connect them to other resource persons as well as um, send uh, our links. I'm, I'm going to ask my colleague to put across some of the links to our eBooks, which have sustainable solutions, uh, some from the students themselves. Um, we have, uh, they're, they're called Pathways to Green Cities and Pathways to Green India. And uh, we have a number of them. So Monadeep is going to put them on in the chat box so that you can download them. They're also on our earthday.org uh, website, uh, which is our international website. So if you'd like to um, go to the India page, you will have access to all these resources, which are free and online um, to, for everyone. So now I'd like to ask Anita Ganeriwal, who's also a former Sanskriti um, uh, science teacher, but she was a science teacher in the junior section. So how did she motivate the students? We've heard about the papier, papier mache and things like that, but let's hear more about what was done to uh, encourage the students. Sure, actually Nita has covered um, maximum uh, part of it. And a few, I will just add a few, and I'll take five minutes more, maybe less yeah. than that. But uh, actually, the ultimate goal of EBS education can be achieved by action. This is the main thing. And uh, action to understand, improve, and develop uh, an attitude for protection of the environment. Action to create an awareness in children, uh, because the children are in very uh, small age group children uh, I was handling to care for their immediate environment. So uh, teachers can uh, make children uh, to understand that uh, how our actions affect the environment, how uh, we can, what we can do and what we should not do uh, to create problem for the um, whole system, ecosystem and all. Actually, there are, um, uh, I should say, uh, incorporation of uh, other subjects like we say interdisciplinary um, uh, approach, uh, because the five major fields are there in FEVC, environmental science, EVS, and that social science, and then uh, ecology, geogra uh, geograph geography or social studies, you can say, then environmental science as pure science, um, uh, separately and uh, environmental chemistry. So uh, what Nita was mentioning, uh, because in junior school, children used to come to me for the uh, EVS once a week, uh, each section was given in their curricular syllabus timetable, um, formal uh, timetable. So these children used to come from class two to five to me and uh, there, there was this other, uh, under my colleague, uh, she was taking nursery and class one and prep. 
so these children uh, paper mache was yes uh, as neeta said major um, thing which was being done there at that time and uh, tearing paper was uh, very interesting for children of especially for uh, for the age group uh, nursery to uh, class 1 and 2 because they used to like uh, tearing paper because before we start paper mache we have to soak this paper uh, strips uh, uh, in water whole night so uh, paper tearing used to be done and during that uh, paper tearing session i used to tell them good stories so that they they can listen and then they keep doing their work and in the same way uh, we used to make um, uh, handmade paper by uh, using this paper mesh uh, mesh paper uh, they used to go into the sun outside the lab uh, each individually uh, wanted to make a paper of course small size because in junior junior school we have the frame of small size for smaller children so and they uh, next day they especially used to come to the evs lab in their free period to see how much the paper has dried up or not in the sun or somebody has uh, you know spoiled it or not and then like this uh, then there was this huge very big solar cooker was provided to us and uh, children used to do uh, solar cooking in that and uh, and the idea was to so that they can uh, get uh, some awareness about the energy conservation uh, and we uh, at that time we used to i used to put water before the, my class uh, so that it doesn't take much time and in half an hour period i can show them some result of cooking so uh, that boil boiling water i used to show them and then i used to put at that time i used to put the maggi in that and they used to uh, cook that maggi and uh, then uh, they they used to you know my god they used to uh, get crazy to eat that maggi cooked by in solar cooker and i took that uh, opportunity at that time i used to take this opportunity to explain them that this maggi is uh, okay you have cooked it in solar cooker and all right very good but um, instead of this cooking maggi Uh, because of, we cooked maggi because of the less time we have in uh, class but otherwise maggi is not good for health eating like this so you should and i used to show them uh, by you know by uh, some uh, maggi pieces in my hand that it is so sticky it uh, gets you know you uh, you, it, uh, you don't get any fiber in that so you should put some vegetables when you want to have maggi in that way so simultaneously two uh, uh, things i used to do solar cooker one thing and um, means energy conservation and the second thing about the good food habits then there was this um, uh, i i i will tell you one very good activity i used to do with class 2 because it was the, as i told you that uh, uh, the science or the social study uh, uh, syllabus was also incorporated sometimes used to i used to do exercise experiments also there so class 2 uh, my colleagues uh, from class 2 they told me that we have a chapter in which uh, children ha uh, have to uh, talk about uh, the journey of wheat from field to the dining table so uh, what uh, so they asked me ma'am what you can do in this uh, how how you can help us in this uh, chapter i said okay fine uh, the so i used to show them the wheat grain in my when you when they used to come for the evs lab class 2 children two grade and wheat then flour and then uh, i used to make a dough with water and make chapati in front of them to show them that this is the step these are the all steps uh, then the how the farmers they and so much effort is uh, being done here Uh, starting from the field by farmer then flour making flour in the flour mill or anywhere and then uh, then finally it comes to your table table for uh, your uh, you know as your food so you should not waste food like this so i used to connect these two things uh, in this way uh, to make because it is very very important for uh, young children uh, for these young children to design my activities in such a way that it generates you know uh inquisitive ness in them and interest in them otherwise you know class 2 uh, class 3 they, these children they will not never understand this that what is environment how it is important and all those things because we have to start from a scratch at, at, the, at that level uh 
uh, yes, older children can understand the global warming and carbon footprinting and everything. But these children are very small. So, and we used to write poems uh, on issues related to um, planets and uh, wild animals and showing them as Nita told me. That was the favorite of actually of my all children at that time, the um, film session. And, uh, watching me videos, uh, going to the senior section, watching videos. Uh, Prakash used to put you know, nice videos uh, related to wildlife. So uh, in this way, it used to be action-packed classroom. Because uh, as I told, that EVS uh, is actually, uh, I can put it in this way, that uh, EVS education is actually, in, should be in the form of educating children. And it is not in the form of literacy. So because it, it, uh, it is a way of thinking, you have to change their way of thinking, taking things and make them responsible so that they can take responsibility of their actions and their um, uh, the impact of their action on environment, positively or negatively. So that's all. Uh, rest of the things Nita has already told you. Paper mache, yes, of course, was very, very interesting. We, we used to make paper uh, mache things. So many articles, uh, items we used to make and sell during the carnival, uh, in, uh, Christmas carnival, um, winter car in, carnival in Sanskrit school. Um, a gala, gala event, actually, of Sanskriti. Uh, so EVS department used to uh, make um, the uh, paper mesh as a main item uh, to sell. And uh, in this paper mesh, we generally we used to make uh, big or the small boxes, small pots, multi-purpose pots. Uh, children used to paint them. First we use, uh, first it was to be made and then it we, you, we used to paint them. Uh, beautiful painting, those who, who Yes, here uh, some trick was there that, that I used to tell them that uh, not all children have a good hand in uh, this painting. So I used to uh, tell them that you can paint one color, whatever of your choice. And then the designing will be do done by those, those who are having good hands so that we can sell them the carnival. Otherwise, um, you know, it lots of effort actually goes in paper mache and uh, children used to love it. Uh, in, in the beginning, they used to say yak yak because in um, paper mache we uh, pulp banate. So the pulp uh, then mixed with the fevicool and uh, fuller's earth, this uh, multani mitti. So yes, and then the dough is uh, made. And after that, we used to have uh, for, uh, molds and uh, after uh, selecting molds and then paper mache. Then there was another kind of activity in which we made, we used to make a mask, face mask by using paper, waste paper. And Anita, one more th thing you forgot to tell, that uh, we used to recycle uh, old uh, one-sided used paper in making notepads for children. And so uh, this one-sided newspaper, yeah, one -sided if I start paper, giving everything, then we'll we'll take two hours. <laughs> there was whole. <laughs> yes, yes. I yeah. I know, I know. Time is up. <laughs> I know, I know. Yes, I understand. I anyway, yeah. it was. It used to be very fun activity, fun period, fun uh, uh, some, something uh, which children love to uh, love to enjoy at that time, and uh, everybody wants wanted to do work. Me karunga, me karungi. Uh, like that and uh, because if you will start doing a paper pan and uh, something like that in the EVS class then the, uh, it will become you know difficult for its younger children to get them involved so uh, main thing is action action as Nita said outside EVS lab or inside EVS lab but it has to be done by action Thank that's you. it Thank you. and we call them acts of green and especially in this lockdown, we started uh, asking people for DIYs of their acts of green. So if you log on to our Earth Day Network India YouTube channel, you'll be able to see some of the videos made by students, whether they're making seed balls or whether they're making um, uh, even in a beauty products, natural beauty products. Wow. So there are a number of DIYs made by the students. Uh, very of various good. schools from all across India. So it's very interesting uh, to see. So let me now ask Chandika, who's an ex-student uh, of Sanskriti, uh, what she remembers 
of her classes and uh, she herself now is based in uh, Goa and she's a research associate and a communications manager at Tandem. Uh, so do let us know what that is all about and how you are doing a sustainable Goa initiative. So let's hear about Let's hear about Sanskriti first, and then we'll go on to what else you're doing. Um, okay. Hi. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Okay, great. So, yeah, my name is Chandika Gupta. Um, I went to Sanskriti, and I'm going to tell you a few things Anita Ma'am and Anita Ma'am may not know about what they taught us, but I'm going to share them anyways. I'm just going to start off with the solo cooker. The moment we heard that you could use it to make Maggie, we found out when the EVS class for the children were in the second half of the day. And me and my friends absolutely made Maggie twice a week in the mornings for Tiffin. We'd sneak in, make it, it was the best. But um, also, yeah, I work currently at Tandem Research and a lot of my research, so again, I do communications and research and both those kind of play in those things I kind of want to talk about. Uh, Neetha ma'am brought back so many memories I had to get a bigger notepad to write down all my uh, thoughts but uh, I'll try and organize them. Um, I work do some research around sustainable Goa the organization I work in does a lot of work around climate change and I work in communications and right now I'm doing some work with I'm slightly involved with sort of the smart city cycle for change initiative where we're trying to encourage people to cycle more for health and for the environment so firstly let me tell you a bit about the EVS lab now the reason it was very important and that goes beyond classroom is it was one, it gave us as kids the sense of experimentation, which is something children in Indian education don't get a lot of freedom to experience. And what that means is you can actually just sit and do something versus memorizing something and putting it out. Um, during my master's program, I, a, I got my master's in design a few years ago. I took an environment studies class thinking, well, I'm studying design, I'll study environment, I can put them together. The class was a disaster. I feel bad for the professor, but I spent the entire time fighting with him because I told him he was teaching us wrong because they'd give us word for word things to memorize, reproduce, and it didn't help me learn anything useful. But everything I did learn through Sanskriti was quite useful. And I mean, so for example, we've mentioned paper mache. My sister still has at least two paper mache projects in our house that she's currently working on. Anita, ma'am, she was a student of yours. I think she's in the audience. And so that's something we still work on now. My mother had a composting pit built outside our house. And so it wasn't just about um, that class. It was about learning about living a certain kind of lifestyle and being able to experiment within that lifestyle for it to come out. And I think, and so this is where um, working in research and academia a little bit and doing some research and working with climate change and all becomes a little important. I think it's very important for younger kids to learn these things because the way uh, environment studies and climate, et cetera, are taught at an older age, unless you have a very strong aptitude for science and you don't want to be in physics, it's very difficult to understand what they're talking about. It's almost clouded with so much data that a common person doesn't pick up those messages without a, so the uh, barrier of entry is very high. Let's put it that way. And so, um, yeah, that is why I think teaching kids at these younger ages is so important. And it wasn't just that, it was a lot of things. For example, I remember Neeta Ma'am once was our substitute teacher in school and she was like, well, I'm here. Let me just tell you about some random environment thing. We started talking about greenhouse and greenhouses and how they grow plants. And she was like, well, I mean, and we were like, well, that seems complicated. And she was like, no, you can go make one. Go make one now. And it was a terrible idea. We took sticks and branches and plastic bags and made a greenhouse. We actually, my class, if I'm not wrong, maintained it for a couple of weeks. We tried really hard to grow plants in it and it didn't work, but we learned to do those things. So now when I'm older and I see projects or issues that I want to be involved in, I have some amount of knowledge of, okay, this will work, this won't work. It's the same with, we went on several tree plantations. Romit, if I'm not wrong, I think I volunteered for several stalls you were a part of for years when I was like in class eight and nine, et cetera. And those experience mean like right now I live in Goa, I'd wanted to open my balcony because there's a lovely view, but the light isn't allowing it. But you know, I grow plants here, a lot of medicinal plants here. And those were all very interesting experiences that I think made me a little bit different from everyone else in my generation. But they also in a lot of ways gave me an edge to figure out how I wanted to live my life. So that I think was a huge, uh, very important thing from these EVS classes. Uh, what else do we have? Um, yes. So the second thing I think, which I think was actually a very huge deal was the uh, Abdul program, which um, it was a very 
So, okay. So, like, I'll tell you a little bit more about myself. Um, I have dyslexia and ADHD. So, I wasn't the best student. And EVS was a place where I could kind of be a decent student and not, because, you know, Indian academics, all of that. The Abdul program was a very interesting uh, experience because, you know, you see and you hear adults talk about these things, but you don't experience it. You know, like kids in, in a lot of Indian schools don't, unless they're from those circumstances where education is slightly more difficult and they're dealing with it directly, don't get exposed to a lot of issues these other kids were dealing with. And I remember we went with Abdul to a lot of places to sort of showcase. And I remember there was another girl we were also helping. And that experience was very different Shubha. in terms of understanding. Uh, no, 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 I meant there was another uh, rag picker girl. I think her name was Kohinoor. I could be wrong. Noor or something, yeah. But Noor she came for a very yes. short time, yes. Yeah, but the concept of, um, so like the 60 kilos of waste and the concept, because I was there the years we implemented the three dustbins and I was quote unquote, one of uh, Nita Ma'am's soldiers to sort of secretly implement it. Like, you know, we snuck into the principal's office, put up posters. I don't know. I was an adult looking at it. I'm not sure how okay a lot of those things were. We turned <laughs> the lights off. We felt very brave. Yeah. But yeah, that experience was, I think, very important, especially when it comes to, I mean, you know, our planet is not doing so great. But also, I think we're reaching a stage, at least in terms of science and academia, a lot of the information that people don't think we have the answers to, we do. It's just not accessible. Like we know climate change has done a certain amount of damage, you know, and a lot of people just sort of take the view, well, it's done. And hopefully someone will invent a miracle that will take us back in time and everything will be better, but it doesn't work that way. There are some very real actions that people can take, but those are sort of clouded around. And there's this idea that one person doing something doesn't do anything. That's actually what I was really hear, happy to hear about um, your foundation talking about sort of DIYs and artwork, because that's a great way to promote that. But yeah, that's kind of the crux of what I wanted to say in terms of education, that college class made me actively want to litter. It, it's not a great feeling, but because I had the experience, and I was fortunate enough to have experienced this sort of exposure on how, on how the ecosystem works. You know, like it's almost like a butterfly effect. If you litter, what actually happens? Because you don't think about those things, especially when you're a child. You don't see action and consequence in any way. And climate change, especially when you're young, is a very foreign concept. Like if you hear the temperatures going up by one degree, that doesn't mean anything to a child, right? It, um, it basically Absolutely. means, okay, it's going from winter to summer. But when you see the sort of, the way these things were visually presented to us and the experiences we had, that I think was very special. For example, when you mentioned the dry garden, you had taken us to the Ridge Forest. And I remember you telling us, I think all the trees that grow there now are not actually indigenous. Like they were replaced at some point and they're actually worse for the environment. And what we were doing with our mini Ridge Garden is what that garden would actually have been. Yes. And when you see experiences like that, even now I'm in positions where, um, you know, one of the projects, upcoming projects we're working with, I did a project a few years ago with wetlands in Delhi, right? And how to make those more accessible to people and safe and things like that. And the ability to work on those things has come from this class. So, I mean, that's kind of all I wanted to say. I think, I mean, especially to teachers and young parents out there, you need to teach them this early because unfortunately it's not accessible when you're older. Absolutely. And unless you have that interest, also making those changes in your lifestyle, like small things, like I live with some of my colleagues now, just like when I wash the dishes, turning the tap off while I'm washing, very small thing. Most people don't do it. And that shocked me, you know, seeing that everywhere you go, especially now in COVID times when you're washing your hands 5,000 times, all of that. The fact that people don't follow these things that I thought were very normal experiences is uh, quite interesting. So I think that is, let's see my notes. Probably everything. All oh, right. We also still you make holy colors. My mom does. It's also better for your skin. So there's that. Hello. Anyways, okay. thanks a lot for having me. <laughs> I yeah. think that's everything. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Shabdika, for mentioning all this. And actually, the lockdown is the time when you can do all this with your parents. I think teachers right now have an excellent opportunity uh, to have the students who are at home, um, you know, work towards uh, creating uh, sustainable lifestyles for the entire family. I know that during the lockdown, we saw a lot of people putting up recipes online. So we actually launched something called Great Taste No Waste, which are recipes using scraps, peels, and leftovers. 
and since half the i mean most of the panelists are bengali you will know how much we use uh, you know our bhartas and peels and things like that uh, it's it's part of our lifestyle it's part of our culinary habits and uh, so look forward to our ebook that's going to be published uh, in october and uh, even these great taste no waste recipes are online on our uh, facebook page as well as our uh, earth day network india youtube page um thank you for saying that you know what you learned in school has stayed with you now uh, as an adult and has uh, you know created uh, you know how you created opportunities uh, Uh, to be climate activists uh, in school and uh, we have also created a network of climate activists uh, for of youth and this is a platform which is called my future my voice and because uh, earth day uh, 2020 was a digital earth day what we did was we reached out to youth uh, across india across south asia and their voices are what is also on our my future my voice uh, platform uh, you will uh, you will see them also on our earth day network uh, in the uh, youtube page and they also have their own uh, facebook page because the whole idea is to create networks amongst youth so that they can learn from each other and from the best practices uh, reach out to more people and uh, take the climate movement forward uh, so let's hear from another student of uh, sanskriti shubhra prakash mukherjee is now an advocate uh, in delhi uh, he used to be the head boy at sanskriti so as a head boy how did you manage to uh, inculcate environmental habits in the students let's hear from you shubhra uh mom to tell you the truth i don't think i had to do anything because uh, sanskrit i don't know about sanskriti now but uh, when i was there uh, neeta mom had such an influence and at the environmental department had such a influence in school that uh, things like uh, simple things like uh, turning the tap off switching off the light uh, lights and the fans they were given and it was surprising to our parents at home that we were so strict about it when we came back home uh, which was i mean i used to of course feel the differences uh, the difference in uh, one circuit to whenever i went to calcutta to visit my grandmother during the summers she used to be surprised that i used to const- my sister and i used to always constantly stick ourselves to the switchboard to switch off the lights and fans but uh, i would broadly want to just address three topics which is how how do you ensure that students over a virtual platform can uh, imbibe and respect the topic of environmental literacy and how can uh, teachers help that so out of the three i would the first example would be of sanskritis uh you know they i just make a list of things uh that happened in my life due to the evs lab and these would be holi celebrations will not do it with artificial colors diwali celebrations unthinkable to do it with crackers as an unthinkable uh, recycled paper we did not know it was possible we are taking it for granted now but this was way this started way back in 2002 or 3 So it was revolutionary back then. I remember in junior school, uh, Anita Ma'am did not teach me, but I used to go and once you were my substitute teacher, you made us uh, cut newspapers for three classes running, and that was finally used to create the paper mash. And then we got the results about three four months later. Uh, but of course, back then we were cribbing, and rightly so, we were children, so. uh the whole com- the whole concept of a compost pit something again revolutionary at that point of time we t- we are taking it for granted now uh dry garden i remember this very well because that was the introduction uh, to this idea that maybe the britishers came and changed the habitation of delhi and which is such a you learn about these things in higher in high school when you do the forest the forest practices the foresting practices of india 
uh, solar cooking. No, I did not get the Maggie. My sister got the Maggie. So thank you very much. Uh, our, we got introduced to waste management and Gazipur landfill and uh, etc. And paper bag. I don't know if you paper remember. Paper bag. Yes. 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 <laughs> I you forgot to mention that. that. In fact, you taught us paper bag by taking newspapers and putting a discarded piece of cloth at the very bottom. That was you. I don't know if you remember this. Uh, so this, I mean, the first, I just wanted to highlight these aspects just to sort of convey to teachers that like you need to be creative to ensure that your students, those who don't excel at rote learning like me, uh, I'm a rote learning doctorate, but, uh, but those who have to do things to understand, you need to be creative and these lessons stay throughout your lifetime. So the EVS lab was revolutionary in this regard. So thank you so much. Belated Teachers Day. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you the, so much. Thank you so much. The second aspect would be uh, we used to use this term uh, when I was a child. It, it was green politics. Uh, little did we know that I don't think the prefix green would be optional anymore. Politics necessarily has to be green. My generation is uh, going to have a, is most likely going to have a very wretched life. And this is for the teachers to convey to their students. For the first time in human history, we will be fighting over resources, natural resources, and no, not oil or coal. We're talking about water. Since China is the flavor of the month, one should know that there is every possibility of mutual aggression between neighbors for water supply. It's already happening along the China border because of the Brahmaputra flow. Bangladesh is complaining that they are actually having refugees cross over to West Bengal and other bordering states because the Fadakka barrage is not giving them enough water. I mean, the we often hear of Somali pirates, but it's actually like every conflict, it too has a resource dimension and resource necessarily means natural resource and hence environmental literacy because we need to start getting trained to think along those lines. The Somali pirates are overwhelmingly fishermen who now can't find fish. I mean, to put it, uh, this is the Somali pirate crisis for dummies, like for myself. And uh, the last, as I mean, the last thing to be sent about the second aspect, which is we need to sort of internalize this attitude. And this is again for most teachers. And uh, if the preservation of your natural resources does not constitute national security or even international security, what does? To put it simply. Thirdly, uh, another activity that maybe students could perform, and this is, uh, this is something that as lawyers, we often have to defend in, let's say uh, the fora like the National Dream Tribunal, you have to show a very bona fide exercise called an environmental impact assessment. So why not start doing an EIA, environmental impact assessment for ourselves in our daily lives and compare it with somebody who doesn't live in the same state or the same country. I mean, cutting across a socio-cultural boundary. So these would be my three remarks. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Shubro. Uh, you've actually reminded me of something else that was launched on Earth Day. It's called Earth Challenge 2020. And I would ask all of you with smartphones to download that. There are three apps in it. One is all about air quality, which I know is a, which is a huge problem in Delhi in the winters. You take a, a screenshot of the horizon and that'll uh, tell people uh, what the air quality uh, index is. And then there's also a, a plastic um, uh, app. Uh, and basically, if you're outside, whenever you go outside, if you take pictures of the trash around you, it'll give us an idea of what the global trends in plastic pollution are. 
uh, what kind of plastic is uh, is 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 being littered uh, in india as opposed to the kind of plastics that's being littered in sri lanka for example um so earth challenge app has plastic has air and has also got another very important thing which is bees now bees um uh, if they go extinct our whole world will become extinct in uh, in a few years because it's very important for food security um so if you can uh, take pictures of bees uh, around you as well uh, whether it's in your uh, terrace garden or uh, or in the parks where you go for your morning walks uh, you can upload that picture of a bee so that uh, and uh, that makes you basically a citizen scientist because after getting the data from uh, people across the world uh, on this you can allow uh, scientists whether it's from nasa the wilson center or even google uh, to to calculate various uh, data um so everyone the students can have lesson plans from this earth challenge 2020 uh, app and you can feel good uh, by being a um, um, citizen scientist yourself and thank you for mentioning how as a well as a head boy you didn't really have to do anything at sanskriti school everybody was already uh, very uh, green they were green warriors themselves um, I mean, I, but we I, do I, I, have I, I, most importantly i would like to just give a shout out to some of the teachers who are also participating shonali ma'am ava malik right. ma'am etc the pressure was on you to perform and conserve energy as in i simply had to follow the rules and that was enough thank you, you and we do if you did not yeah and we do have a pledge online right now it's called each one save one so if you go on to each one save one dot org there are nine mantras which will help you save uh, electricity save energy um so earth day network has a number of focus areas and renewable energy is one of them farmers for the earth is another where we're promoting organic chemical free farming um and things like that um we also have another uh, program which was as i mentioned the morning assembly and uh, from uh, our next thursday's uh, panelists are going to be winners of the morning assembly contest so do um uh, log on next thursday as well at 4 o'clock we have another panelist now romit sen who used to be a resource person um for sanskrit the uh, uh, school right now he's part of the water program and he also uh, is part of um romit will you remind me what it is it's sustainable green initiatives so what is it the institute for sustainable communities yeah, exactly so will you tell us about that and what you used to do at sanskrit uh, sanskrit yes. school yes uh thank you karuna nila and nita ma'am you know i think um, while i sat here for the last one year i was transported to 2007 to 2010 and i mean as i said this is like endless mem- memories so uh, i mean uh, i thank you and my co panelists for uh, speaking about a subject that's close to my heart something you know more than my profession what i am doing my bread and butter now as i look at back in the last 15 years of my professional experience i see the discourse on environmental conservation protection of natural resources change and change certainly in a more positive context around you know that it's become more active vibrant and engaging now one bit is of course we have you know schools like sanskriti teachers students and a lot you know other schools across this country the awareness is increasing but i think one of the main reason that we you know hear this whole um, momentum is that the harsh reality is also hitting us more frequently i mean you know some statistics very you know like large 70% of india's surface water is polluted groundwater contamination is on the rise in areas that we work in maharashtra seven out of the last 10 years has seen less than average rainfall we have seen industries being shut down because of uh, the water crisis and resulting impact on economy and incidences of urban floods so whether it is agriculture whether it is industry whether it is you know the humanity environment we all are as i said the blue planet is emitting red signals and these red signals are becoming far too pronounced and that's perhaps one of the reason that we all are stating that it is time for us to act now now uh, i'll just make three submissions and you know we'll try to weave in my experience at sanskriti you know primarily and with the program that i ran with schools across 78 towns in india i think aditya saxena mam is here she was i think with bps vasant kunj 
Rekha Lalla ma'am was there with Salwan, DAV school, Kendriya Vidyalaya, you know, Saket. So with all the school, I think uh, the one point, the three submissions that I'd like to make in the context of environment conservation and literacy. One is that, okay, you know, the problem is too huge, we all know, but you know, then who is, who is you know, the one, the first one who takes an action for changing? Is it the government? Is it civil society? Is it industry? Who? I think we all know, as you know, it came out in the example of, you know, like how Nita Ma'am said, that it is me, you know, it is, I, as an each individual, we have to walk the talk to change the needle on environment conservation. And I think one aspect which, you know, maybe Nita Ma'am, we didn't coin this term while we were doing this uh, at Sanskriti, but this whole aspect of our ecological footprint, you know, where we work with students to understand that, you know, how much resources do they use? So, you know, what does it take to use, say, a carton? Where you know, like, uh, because there is a footprint to it. You have, you have, you know, used water, paper, energy to produce it. But I think the aspect around individual, and we, if we all agree that individual can do things, is that how can I reduce my ecological and environmental footprint? I've heard that you know the Earth's ecological footprint is 1.7 times. So the Earth overshoot day this year was August 22. So that is you know the time where the Earth we we exhaust all the resources in a year that we need to live and grow. So with all of these changes happening, it's me, you know, I am at the central of all of this and action has to begin with me. And there were enough examples, you know, that were put across through, you know, Shubro mentioned about it, Chondi comment about it. So we heard the example of Sanskrit school, how each one of them was, you know, part of that change. The second uh, point is around, so, okay, I have engaged, I'm an environmental conscious citizen. How do I move to the aspect of engaging with my sphere of influence and engagement, which is, you know, moving beyond myself, my family, my communities, uh, the people, the associations that I engage with. So while awareness is important, it is, and uh, Anita Ma'am did mention about it, we have to move beyond awareness and engaging students, communities for environmental literacy, I think has to have four aspects. One is assessment. And something that you know we did as part of our program was regular air and water quality monitoring. In this data-driven world, we need to make informed choices based on data. And if we as citizens have a, had a role in collecting that data, nothing better than that. The second is of course awareness. You use that data and information for generating awareness. Next is around action. You know, like actions that you take at individual and community level on water, waste, paper, energy. And last is advocacy. You know, and I think I'll bring this whole aspect around which also, you know, while Nita Ma'am did mention this, is this whole importance of partnership. You heard Chintan in her speech. You heard, you know, like uh, Swetcha, you heard development alternatives. You heard Delhi uh, government eco clubs. Uh, I'm happy, you know, and again, this is part of, again, that flashback that's happening in my subconscious mind is that, you know, the whole set of schools in Delhi, we launched the Earth Charter in Delhi with the Department of Environment and presenting it to the then Chief Minister, the late Sheila Dixit. We worked with the Forest Department in all the plantation drives. And I knew the plantation that we did with Sanskriti in 2009 was right across the ITC Moria, which was a corporate partnership. So this whole aspect of, you know, that how you engage with your sphere of influence, partnerships with government, civil society, uh, educational institutions, community organization, RWS, is the key and something you know which this program has uh, i mean this example that we saw has uh, shown so why is of course you know the four aspects as i said assessment awareness advocacy and action and then you know the whole aspect of partnership because we all know that we are all part of part of a larger ecosystem but together that power of collective certainly has to drive this change and the last thing is you know the connection with our local ecosystem i was very happy when shubro mentioned uh, the landfill uh, gazipur when Chondika mentioned, mentioned about the tree plantation, which we did in Garimandu. Now, I was in Delhi for the last 20 years, and I think no conversation around the environment of Delhi can be without the connection to Yamuna. And you know, the fact that we have two students here who spoke about Gazipur, landfill, what does it mean? What is the impact of this on the environment, water, soil? Chondika, she mentioned about tree plantation in Garimandu, which is the floodplain of river Yamuna. So how do you connect these initiatives in the larger context of our local ecosystem is important. So again, as I said, the example of Delhi, no, you know, a, a example is complete without Yamuna, but it is a 21 kilometer river that flows, you know, north-south on the eastern side of it. 
But what about the larger ecosystem of Yamuna? I am sure a lot of the people who are in the audience have taken a walk on Lodi Garden. Do we know that the Art Pula Bridge, which was basically eight culverts, was a tributary of Yamuna? The elevated road, which takes us from Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium to the Commonwealth Games Village in 10 15 minutes, we call it Barapula Drain, but Barapula was a tributary of Yamuna. I lived in Dwarka, West Delhi, and then, you know, one of the when I used to take, you know, those buses, they said, you know, bus stop kaha hai, nale ke part, which was like the Najabgarh drain, but that's the Sahibi river. So, you know, when you talk of environment, when you, while of course, individual action, very important, look at engaging with sphere of influence, assessment, awareness, advocacy, and action. But let us also connect with this larger ecosystem. For me, Central Delhi was about Kanot Place, Palika Bazaar, and Hanuman Mandir. But I never knew that there is a Agrasen Ki Bauli, which, you know, is a step well, which teaches about, about, you know, rainwater harvesting and conservation. So within Delhi, within the examples, you know, like I think uh, the point that I'm making is all this has to connect to the larger ecosystem in the context of what I've been saying that you know, the hydrological cycle and life cycle is one. It's only when we are able to bring that connect, we'll be able to, you know, like be better citizens, empowered, informed, and be doing our best. And lastly, you know, ending with the quote of the father of the nation that the earth, the air, the land, and the water are not an inheritance from our forefathers, but a loan from our children. As a father, I can sense, you know, this, you know, like my son uh, was one and a half year old when he was diagnosed with bronchial asthma in Delhi. And, you know, the fact, so we have a huge rollover to pay. We need to hand over it to them as it was, at least it was handed over to us. And as I said, it's the power of collective and uh, that is something that will keep us moving. And certainly, I certainly see the future very bright. We'll overcome. Thank you. Good. Thank Good. you so much, Ramit. You'll be delighted to know, and as Karuna mentioned earlier, um, our next ebook is also going to be on water. Um, so I now request Karuna to come on. Karuna is Country Director, Earth Day Network India, as well as Regional Director for Asia. Um, and I'd like her to give a vote of thanks and to remind everyone that all the whatever we put in in the chat box, for example, our ebook links and things like that, it's basically to help you with resources. These are case studies uh, all across India uh, and they're, they're short, uh, you know, three pages maybe, and they're, it's all online and you'll get all kinds of information of sustainable practices, of innovative strategies, and whether it is in greening public spaces or making your uh, schools green, or even if it's protecting our biodiversity, we are bringing all these solutions to you because uh, solutions do exist. It's just that we have to be more informed about them. And uh, as you said, try to increase our sphere of influence, try to reach this information to as many people as possible, uh, which is why we're Earth Day Network and we're networking with all of you. Um, so over to Karuna, if you'd like to... And these ebooks are free, absolutely free on the net. So please go ahead and uh, enjoy them. We would love to hear your com comments. Uh, you know, this has been a most riveting uh, session because each one of you has such a thinking mind. Uh, it, it's fabulous. So I want to take advantage of that and ask each one to give me just one sentence on why or how in India can we take uh, environmental education to the next step of being, of having students who are environmentally literate and those that take civic action for the environment. So what is the reason? Because, you know, we have environmental education as a compulsory subject, but you know, people are not moving to the second and third stage. So why is that so? Maybe some limited, uh, like students of your school, you know, but why is it that uh, all mass people are not doing that? So if we can start with Nita, and I'm going to take notes, uh, and, and you're just your one thought. What is it? Is it something wrong with our teaching? Is it that we don't encourage them enough? Is it that the outside atmosphere is not conducive to it? What, what is it? Um, that's one of the reasons that I didn't want to have a textbook, you see. Uh, 
because like Chandika also said, she did it masters, you know, in environment. She said she, that she found the class to be hopeless. Mm -hmm. But whatever she learned in school, she could, she's, she's able to, you know. So I said, Mom, that's, that's the thing, you know, it has to be like Anita also said, action. It has to be action oriented. Oh. It has, children should be motivated to act and act now. This is the time to act now. So there is, we don't, our children are prepared for everything for exam oriented. No. You know, when you say right, essay competition, it's competition. Mm -hmm. Okay, post a competition, there's always children have to prove themselves. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not how much you're doing, how big you're doing, it is what you're doing. So what you're doing, how you're doing, for whom you're doing, that is what is important. And no matter how small you do, it should be appreciated. It should not be compared. There should be no competition. So I think even NGO should stop, stop the thing of competition. Appreciation at every level, big or small is important. And every action, like we say, every drop counts, every drop counts. So it should be action oriented. That's one of the reasons I was totally against textbook because I wanted children to feel environment, enjoy environment, know environment, and live environment. And that's what I think these two, what they spoke, I was, I felt blessed. I really felt blessed. Great. Romit, you want to add to that? Anything you want to add? Yes. So I think uh, when we talk of, you know, and this is just based on my, I have the fortune to work in around 220 districts out of the 650 in India. There is a huge divide between the metros and the non-metros, the non-metros and the tier three cities. So I think we need to, you know, create an environment where there is greater learning. Because I'm, I'll just give an example very briefly. You know, like when I went to Ratlam, you know, on a, this environment education program, and I said that, uh, you know, like we are supposed to do this, this. But then a kid stood up and he said, "He said, but you Delhi mein rehte ho. Aap humse teen guna zara generate karte ho." Hmm. So I think, you know, there are also these, you know, aspects of around trust around, you know, like the big versus small. The so I think, you know, as we, we should create opportunities where, you know, students across villages, I mean, in Sanskrit, we again took students to Taragram in Bundelkhand. So where there is this intermingling of, you know, students and these days, everybody has access to internet, you know. Um, so I think uh, my suggestion would be to create more avenues and opportunities for students, teachers across due to internet because and we will build in, you know, trust and also, you know, share our experience. I'll just add to what you said, Ramit. I had gone to a village in Orissa and, you know, what they told me was that environmental concerns are the prerogative of the rich. They said it, of course, in Uriya and they translated. They said, we are more concerned about whether we have a roof over our heads, whether there's enough to eat, whether there's a job. And water quality doesn't matter to us. The quantity of matter, of water matters. So, you know, we, you're absolutely right. You know, there are different aspects of looking at things. And we tend to forget that India is not just urban India. It's only 30% or even less, you know. <laughs> we have to take it. So we will share with you, uh, you know, our uh, awards that we give. And if you have any to recommend, we'd be happy to consider those uh, I want to add in this very um, I'm sorry to uh, say this I am not feeling very happy to say this uh, the reason why we are not still uh, able to handle the problem and uh, though all, all of us uh, those who are literate and educated people we know that the environmental challenges are growing day by day but still there is some lack of desire to do action or some lack of seriousness to take this issue. Uh, ek approach is and I can afford to uh, use it. So I don't bother about, uh, you know, saving or anything because I have money I can spend so I can use it. And the people who are, uh, uh, who have problem in their um, earning, uh, uh, for their bread and butter. On the other hand, they think that meri to mirko roti mil jaye, uske baad ganga ka pani ganda hai ya yamna ka pani ganda hai, who bothers? That is. So these two aspects, these two things are there uh, in my view, uh, which are not letting us uh, take it this issue in that perspective uh, 
which it actually should be. Yeah, that's very true. And, you know, nobody thinks of anything beyond local or beyond mine. But I think uh, the COVID-19 has taught us that lesson. Yes, absolutely. 190 countries are all affected. So if, you know, from the environmental field, we wanted to always say the world is one, the world is connected, uh, you know, the air is uh, sanji hai, as they say in Hindi. Nobody believed us, but now that COVID is there, maybe they'll start believing that the world is connected. I hope so. Okay, Shubro. You're muted, Shubro. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, I think our uh, overpopulation coupled with poverty is really going to be uh, and continues to be a challenge because let's say even amongst the elitist classes, there's this fear that if we don't study, if we focus on lighter things like environment, mm -hmm. then we won't get the big job because the opportunity cost is poverty and a starvation related death, to put it mm -hmm. very bluntly. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think that uh, environmental related issues are already making it uh, into the political medium. Uh, mm -hmm. Not because we want it to, that, but because it just is water, water quality, water mm -hmm. price, uh, clean air. I mean, at least in Delhi, these are, I suspect these will be, these are already big issues, but elections might be fought on it. Uh, I want to be an optimist about us. Because in this fight, as much as humankind wants to observe borders, environment knows no borders. Mm. Uh, I, I, I honestly hope that science comes to a rescue and we learn how to use it well. Because we have already breached 350 uh, long back. Uh, so things are not looking very good from that. That's why I keep saying like, there's nothing called green politics. If politics is not green, what is? So when push comes to shove, I hope we'll discipline ourselves, stop indulging in identity politics and get on with sustainable living. And these are not by words anymore. Yeah. Great. And then as Neela will tell you, we have another thing called vote, vote Earth, which is uh, going on in the US where they're asking people to only vote for candidates who promise green issues. But I must confess in India, when I spoke to one or two of the politicians, they, tell, they told me, Bhenji, if we talk about environmental issues, we lose the elections because they, in the rural areas, they're more interested in So we do have those problems. Come on, Chandika. Um. Okay, so I think, so to answer like the first part of your question, which is why is it most people aren't doing anything? For kids, I think I'd go with Nita Ma'am's point where it's like, we learned that we could do things, so we did things. Most kids don't get the opportunity to feel like they can do anything. And these are such huge issues. If you don't think one person, you don't think you can make a difference unless it's a huge group. So there's no point trying to do something. They don't understand that once one person starts, then more people start, all of that goes. Um, on the sort of question of how to approach, and I think people talk about different perspectives. I think approaching this problem, if you're looking at an adult from somewhere versus a child, is very different. Right mm -hmm. now, I mean, we are at a time where the internet is widely accessible in India. And I think mm -hmm. in terms of getting young children to learn more about environment online, the mm -hmm. most logical option to me would be finding a way to gamifying it. Not with like a victory score in mind, but with mm -hmm. a sort of team cooperative effort in mind you know so say you have a school that's gamified a project and they get badges or achievements etc i mean young people I mean, india is one of the largest gaming populations and when you look at the history of say video games like the whole concept behind pokemon was the creators liked collecting bugs and couldn't find another friend who liked doing it so they made mm -hmm. pokemon and now everyone likes doing it mm -hmm. and you know that's big corporate whatever but i think at a level with a kid if you can create say try making a, I don't know, bird feeder out of a Coke bottle and that learn you a badge or something you can show your friends or something you can share on social media or something. And I know this is a very, 
and it might be more urban facing, but I do feel like more and more people, even in villages, are getting access to smartphones. Um, I did a vill. I was working in a village a couple of years ago in Udaipur, and you know there were all these local kids who were designing apps themselves that weren't going on the marketplace, but they were sharing within. So you'd pay fifty rupees, get an Indian fashion app. It wasn't going to Google Store or anything, but those innovations are being taken place, and I think if we can maybe help facilitate that in a language kids today understand. You know, yeah, so those same activities, but they get something fun and shareable out of it. That sort of motivates them. So as time is really over, I'm going to ask Neela to let you know we do have some. We think to your thoughts. We do have some gaming, uh, you know, devices which we have developed, and one is in the process of getting developed. Maybe you can help us with that one. We'll. You know, show Karuna, it to you. Uh, I'll take just half a second here. Oh, sure. There, no, no. there is one question here on the screen by Abhijit Day. Uh -huh. uh, and I would like, uh, I will actually would like Shubhra or Romit or Chandrika to answer this question on behalf mm -hmm. of us teachers. Uh, <laughs> uh, so would you read out the question, please? Yeah. Uh, Abhijit Day is asking the DD for low standard students, which method you use to pick up them? Please give me suggestion. Uh, low, stand, uh, low standard students means maybe e EWS category or I don't know what he meant for the, this. I think he but, might uh, be meaning those who are not academically doing well. Maybe that's what he maybe, means. Maybe that also can, can be. But I think so, that can answer best, you know. No, uh, that I just wanted Shubro, Romit, or Chandika to answer this. What they, they think are, about it? They are yeah. high standard. Students, right? <laughs> no, no, but they. I am sure that they will be able to answer this. This okay. question. Okay. So Shubro, Chandrika, or Romit. Uh, Chandika. So I, I, I just don't what agree do you with one. Yeah, so I think I, the question needs a little clarity because I think I, I'm personally not, you know, like very uncomfortable with the connotation that's used and that can be totally, you know, unintentional. Yes, of course, of course. Even yeah, uh, so if I we understand this case. as students coming from economically, you know, like not so affluent economic backgrounds, if uh, that is, you know, if that is the implication of that meaning, I guess, uh, as I said, all these impacts are hitting us irrespective of, you know, sex, color, age, community. So it's only about how you in this system of experiential learning, whether it is in a Ashala in Kotha village of Kalam block in Yavatmal, or it is Sansuti school in Dr. Radhakrishnan. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's about experiential learning that needs yeah. to be brought about. So I just only have to thank say. you. Thank you. Romit. Thank you. Thank you. Romit. Thank Back you. to you, Neela. Everyone for joining us today. As a thank you, I think I'll send you our snakes and ladders game. We've actually developed them, uh, uh, keeping in mind our various themes. One was end plastic pollution, saving water, saving energy, climate change, and protecting our species. Um, so I will send that across to all the participants as well as the, the panelists for joining us today. Do join us again next Thursday at 4 p.m. Uh, we are now uh, doing these webinars twice a week on Tuesdays as well as Thursdays at 4 p.m. And do like our Facebook page, our Instagram. We're on Twitter as well so that you know what are the other uh, programs and campaigns that we have uh, ongoing. Uh, just to remind you, tomorrow, for example, is World Ozone Day. 19 September all the way up to 2nd of October is uh, is World Cleanup Day leading up to Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. Um, so do log on and uh, uh, be part of all these campaigns with us. Uh, so thank you. And if there are any um, uh, attendees uh, who would like to be panelists, uh, do write in to me and I will try to schedule you in as much as I can. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe. You too. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye, Nita. <laughs> bye. Bye, bye Chandika. Bye, bye Shubhro. Thank you so much. Bye, Anita. Thanks, Neela. Nothing Thank was, you. Uh, you know, impossible for you in the EVS. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, really, because I have worked with her and uh, she, she is amazing. She is amazing.
Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.